Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green landfall combo deck and it's very reminiscent of the Junt landfall decks from the previous standard. Now of course the main difference here is that we no longer have access to the new Capenna fetch lands that would gain life and fetch a basic, but we did gain Fabled Passage in the mana base which is an extra fetch land that can find a land that enters untapped, so that's a little bit of an upgrade even though in general I think it's a downgrade losing out on all the life gain from the those other fetch lands. And then we did also gain Halumra, Bellow of the Woods, a 6 mana star star. Power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, also has Vigilance and Reach. And when Lumra enters, we get to mill 4 cards and then return all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this ability is very similar to the one on Aftermath Analyst, which can mill 3 when it enters and then can be sacrificed for 4 mana to return all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So the plan in this deck is usually to plot a copy of Pitiless Carnage, which can then let us sacrifice any number of permanents we control and then draw that many cards. So by plotting it, we don't have to spend mana casting it in a future turn. And then at the same turn where we cast Pitiless Carnage, often sacrificing all of our lands, we can then also float a bunch of mana to then either cast Lumra to immediately get all of those lands back or sacrifice an Aftermath Analyst to do the same. So that way we end up drawing a ton of cards while putting an extra bit of uh, mana on the battlefield thanks to all the fetch lands that we've sacrificed in the meantime and then ideally we also have either Nissa and or Spelunking on the battlefield. Nissa will generate mana with each landfall trigger so that can give us the mana to once again set up these graveyard loops to generate more mana and more landfall triggers. Can also find additional elves or elementals if we trigger landfall twice which is perfect for finding additional copies of Nissa, Aftermath Analyst and even Lumra, which is an elemental, so that's perfect. And then the other card that can help us combo off is Spelunking, which makes it so lands enter the battlefield untapped, so even after sacrificing an Evolving Wilds or Escape Tunnel, we'll have our lands enter untapped, which is great. And then more importantly, when we sacrifice Analyst or play Lumra, all those lands will also enter untapped, so we can immediately tap them for mana to keep comboing off. And then our eventual win condition is going to be either Lumra attacking for a ton of damage, after maybe wiping the opponent's board, or we can use our Iridescent Vine Lasher, only playing two copies, but we only really need it on the final turn where we win the game, so I haven't found four copies to be necessary. Can play it with Offspring, and then whenever our land enters, we get to deal one damage to target opponent. With the extra Offspring token, we now get to deal two damage, so it doesn't take a whole lot to close out the game, especially when we can sacrifice our land and return them from the graveyard several times in one turn. And then to round things out, we've got Pillage is a Bog, can also be plotted to maybe cast it in a future turn when we have more lands in play to help find those missing combo pieces. And then we've got a bit of removal to hopefully stand a chance against aggro with two copies of Cut Down, two copies of Go for a Throat. Then Choking Miasma has been one of my favorite sweepers as of late, as it's a great answer to the various red creatures that usually deal damage equal to their power when they die. Now we get to shrink those down and can occasionally kick it as well. And then we also have two copies of Gix's Command, which can wipe the board, maybe take care of a larger creature, but it can also return two creatures from our graveyard to our hand, since we might end up milling a few with Analyst or Lumra, so being able to get back Vine Lasher, Nissa, and other creatures can be quite important as well. And then a mana base is very budget friendly, just four copies of Fabled Passage as the only rare, and then a nine swamps, seven forests, could go 8 and 8 as well. And then we just want some other fetch lands that can be played and then sacrificed to get a basic, even if they enter tapped initially, since that's a way to enable landfall twice, as well as fixing our colors early. And then it's also a land that will end up in the graveyard for either Analyst or Lumra to get back. And it's also very nice with Nissa being able to play Nissa and a fetch land, means we immediately get to find another elf or elemental, as well as generating additional mana. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Do need to hit some more land drops, but there's plenty of those in the deck. And we can always pillage to try and find a land. Facing Fabled Passage, so not an aggro deck at least. So maybe for now go Analysts, since we have our land drop for next turn taken care of. Did not mill any lands, unfortunately, but we have two fetch lands already. 
might mill more with a second analyst. Opponent red green and a picnic ruiner, so this is still an aggro deck trying to set up some pump spells. So would love to keep up go for the throats, but also need to make sure we keep developing our own game plan. So we can pillage and look for a land, swamp is fine. Although I guess at this point Fabled Passage is better, putting an extra land in graveyard. And uh, we can pass. Don't really want to lose the Analyst, since next turn I can sacrifice it. Maybe after chum blocking to get a bunch of lands back. But yeah, Picnic Ruiner can deal a lot of damage here. Our opponent plotting Alchemist to pump Picnic Ruiner. And they have a fight spell it seems, yeah. Alright, so we're taking 10. At least I have go for the throat for next turn. Uh, that was an effective turn. Choking Miasma isn't bad either. So, could still be convinced to play Analyst since I have go for the throat to play alongside it. And then Miasma can also answer the Alchemist potentially. Seems a little bit more mana efficient. And this time we can answer a hard hitting question by casting Go for the Throat. The downside of letting the opponent untap is that they could have some hex proof or indestructible trick. Opponent plots another Alchemist, okay. So. Can wait and see if they have another hard hitting question. Otherwise, fine to let them attack. And then I'll have to go for the throat, otherwise, they uh, force me to jump with Analyst. So that worked. Opponent can still play the Alchemist, which does have Trample. So now I could try to play Miasma. To take out the Alchemist, if they have a pump spell, it's not going to work. Otherwise, I can get back quite a few lands with my Analyst. But the uh, Trample could still make it so that they deal damage even if I jump and sacrifice. Would have loved to have a Nissa in play when we sack the Analyst, but I don't think I can afford to. And then we can maybe clean up both Alchemists with a Miasma next turn. But there's more pump spells incoming. Once we get Lumera in play, it is going to be a large blocker. And yeah, another Picnic Ruiner makes it so both Alchemists survive choking Miasma. And yeah, I'm taking 5 down to 5, so a single Lumera may not keep me alive anymore. And they even had a giant growth, so now we're at 2. Cut down also doesn't do it, but uh, let's see if I go Nissa and then fetch twice with Fabled Passage. We already have enough mana to play Lumra. And then I can also maybe combine Choking Miasma with Cut Down, first shrinking their creature down and then uh, being able to cut it down. So yeah, we're kind of going off here. So first we want to sack the escape tunnels. Aftermath Analyst represents a ton of extra mana as well. So we can play Lumera. Maybe after playing Analyst since I have the mana to do both. Since this might mill more lands into the graveyard. Alright, that's a lot of extra mana. Sadly, all my lands enter tapped, since we don't have a Spelunking in play. But we still have quite a bit of mana, so there's no lands left for Analyst to get back. But now we're on the Choking Miasma plane. With Kicker, can grow 
this up perhaps. And then now cut down Alchemist. And hopefully this is enough. Got a 17-17 on defense. Challenger is fine. So next turn, just by playing another Lumra, I can put additional lanes in play to grow the one that can attack. It does not have Trample, so they can jump it potentially. Escape Tunnel only works with power 2 or less. And I'm not taking any risks. Opponent had the Monstrous Rage. Gets to take out Nissa. At least we don't take any Trample damage. And now we can just attack for the win. Close one here against the red-green, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing some of the early kind of self-mill or ramp cards, but uh, I think we can still keep. We've got the early removal. We can start by fetching. And then Playing a Lumra, even if it's on curve, could still be effective. We'll probably find more fetch lines along the way. Opponent red-white, although usually bivouac points towards a slightly more controlling or mid-range deck. Analyst mills another fetch land. And yeah, opponent on Mardu, so don't expect Analyst to survive. Although Gix's command can also get multiple creatures back. Now pillage the bog, I don't mind plotting. Playing the Swamp in case we draw our other plot card. Pitiless Carnage is also double black. Can keep this one back in case they flash in any tokens. Wouldn't have the Helix. And alright, Hardfire Hero. Kind of unexpected here. So maybe it is more aggressive than I imagined. So Mardu Mice is maybe what they're working with. Maybe the black is just for the uh, burn together from the cell sword and choking Miasma, looking as good as ever. Now, do we want to pillage the bog to maybe hit a land for turn? I guess we'll just cast a Miasma here and then wait another turn. Don't take any damage. But yeah, if pillage only finds a tapped fetch land, it might have been worth it to play it and then save my untapped plan for Gix's command, but uh, we should be able to find pretty much whatever we need. Opponent sacking the village already, so they might be out of creatures. They did find a replacement hero. And we have a go for the throat, so time to pillage. And could get a pitiless carnage, but I also need to hit my land drops, so... Yeah, just getting a basic casting Gix's command to get back Nissa and Analyst seems acceptable. Even though it's a little bit overkill just for a Heartfire hero. I still kind of need a land here to have an efficient turn. Since they could once again destroy the Analyst before I can sacrifice it. Next challenger with another cheeky house mouse, this time revealing a Nettle Guard. Can be an answer to Spelunking. Speak of the Devil. Alright, so maybe for this turn we just get the Spelunking down, hope to draw into a land, and then keep up Go for the Throat. Alright, perfect. Do I want to play the escape tunnel now? I don't have to. Could save it for Nissa. Yeah, I guess it's potentially fine to keep. The next turn I could go Nissa, play and fetch, have 5 mana. I guess that's still a little bit short of Analyst Sacrifice or play Lumra. So maybe I'll put it in play and just not sacrifice it yet. And I think I'm okay letting them untap with the Challenger, even though they could enable Valiant once again. All right. Now we can maybe deny the card draw. Although Valiant will still trigger. Finding a Manifold Mouse this time. Although they need a red mana. Which they have. 
opponents also running out of cards here to left in hand. So for now it's going to be Manifold with a cheeky house mouse. Okay. Feels like we're still in control. Take our turn, find Analyst. So how many lands do we have in graveyards? Two fetch lands, can add a third. So it's not what I was hoping for, but maybe this turn we just play Lumra and then wait on the Analyst plus Nissa combo. And this might be big enough to soak up an attack. And in fact, I could still play Nissa and have a fetch land left to make mana. I think I kind of just hold these for next turn. So I don't expose Nissa to removal. Can maybe afford to play one Aftermath Analyst just as an extra blocker. Okay, pass a turn. And then next turn I'll be able to keep comboing. Ideally find some of our card draw effects. Another pillage debug would be nice. Or just our uh, landfall creature to close out the game. Although Lumra can also get there eventually. I do still have Go for the Throat available, just in case. But only in case of emergency. Manifold Mouse triggers. And a cheeky house mouse is attacking. Okay. So they must have multiple pump spells in hand. Monster's Rage, step one. I guess it would already be enough to trade. Yeah, I mean, we could again just use Go for the Throat here. Which might be reasonable. Nissa's also pretty likely to find additional Lumras. But on the off chance that we don't, it's maybe safer to keep the one in play. And a Rabbit Gnaw will finish off my Analyst as well. Well, good thing we have another one. So play Nissa. Play Analyst. Sadly, didn't mill any additional lands there, but we can still get a bunch back. Find another Analyst, so yeah, I can once again play it after sacking all my fetch lands, get even more lands in play, and we might get Lumra up to 21 power to just end the game right now. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a Keeper. Could keep up cut down. I'm more inclined to just start with Evolving Wilds, get Swamp, and then I can cut down turn two and once again fetch. Opponent on maybe the Rabbit deck. Could also now just play Analyst as a blocker since they don't tend to have too many token makers for two mana, and uh, even if they give this one extra power, we can still block. And I'm also not too worried about removal. Which would be a reason to maybe hang on to the Analyst for a bit longer. Next turn I can play Spelunking and still have Cutdown available. And then turn after a Sack Analyst to put a bunch of lands in play. So yeah, off to a promising start. Still need to probably draw into some of our Sweepers to withstand the Rabbits. Pillage the box, not bad. So Spelunking. I'll just put in the Swamp, keep Fabled Passage to maybe go alongside one of my landfall payoffs. And then I don't think there's any instance I need to play around. Could still take out Quest Caller now just to play around our opponent convoking it with a Knight Errant. But we'll wait and see. Right, Valley Might Caller. So now it's probably worth it to take out the Quest Caller before they get to scry. Right, opponent's gonna get lost to analysts. That's too bad. Could have also hit the Spelunking. And this was an excellent draw. Might find a replacement analyst now. And that's why we save the fetch lands. Okay. 
Found another Nissa instead. Can still sack a map token. And then maybe just plot Pillage the Bog. Pitiless Carnage is something I'd like. And then Pillage the Bog will need to find an effect to return lands from Graveyard in play, whether that's Lumera or another Analyst. Nissa can help there as well. And for now we've got a decent blocker as well. Alright, so... Step one is probably Fable Passage, in case Nissa finds another Analyst or Lumera. Found another Nissa instead. Okay, time to Pillage. Finding... Analyst has to be the pick here, just double checking. So if I were to play Analyst right now, I can still sacrifice it. Yeah, that's gotta be good enough. Could also cast a Carnage first, but I think we'll generate enough value as is with Nissan Spelunking in play. Okay, and then time to Carnage. And then I have to think about what I want to sacrifice here, maybe some of my tapped lands. Could also go fetching first, but I might find one of my landfall payoffs. But by fetching first I do thin out the deck, so I make it more likely that Carnage finds a way to get all those lands back, which is the eventual goal. So yeah, we have plenty of things we can sacrifice, it's just a matter of building up our mana and making sure we draw into what we're looking for. And now by thinning out a deck of basics we also improve those odds. If I fail to find something to get the lands back, I'm gonna regret sacrificing a bunch of them. But the odds should be in our favor. And then I can leave myself with a few a lands still. Something along these lines should suffice. Alright, and we found Lumera, plus a Gixis command, so yeah. Can start by playing Vine Lasher with Offspring. And then now play Lumera. And that might just win us the game right now. And lots of triggers on the stack. Gix's command can also get back various creatures out of the graveyard, like Aftermath Analyst. So we can keep sacrificing lands and getting them back for as long as we have basics to search up. And even afterwards, just sacking a fetch land and getting it back if we have a lot of floating mana could be good enough. But yeah, I've got a sneaking suspicion that our opponent's not going to survive this. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Start by getting a Swamp. I'm not gonna keep my opponent waiting. Not sure yet if I'm playing Analyst on turn 2 against Golgari. It's less likely to survive, so... Yeah, let's just go tap land, keep up cut down for now. And maybe play it slow. Alright, opponent's got the Dread Knights, just drawing a card. So no need to cut down. Probably just get another Swamp, in case I need to plot Pitiless Carnage. Splunking was a good draw. Although they might have answers to enchantments. 
So yeah, we kind of want to wait on Analyst until we can immediately sacrifice it, or at least by playing it later, we might make it more awkward for the opponents to time their removal when they might want to cast other spells. No need to immediately sacrifice Fabled Passage, aligned is good. So, kind of need to keep Go for the Throat as a potential answer to Shieldred, which can punish us for drawing cards with our uh, Pitiless Carnage, but I also have a Gixis Command as another answer. So it seems reasonable to go for the Throat Preacher. And then I'm hoping to untap with Analyst, if not, ideally find a land to play Lumra, and then Command can get multiple creatures back, including Analyst, Lumra, and Nyssa. And Red Knight once again drawing, that's fine. Do they have an answer for Analyst? It's gonna be a Caustic Bronco next, that dies to cut down, and uh, could cast it now. Although with Spelunking we should have lots of leftover mana. And possible we drew a Nissa and Fabled Passage would have been useful. Alright, Pitiless Carnage was an excellent draw. Still feels okay to sack Analyst to get two lands back. And then I can still... let's see... I would have Fabled Passage as a third land. Yeah, let's just go for that now. So sack analysts. And then I have the mana to cut down Bronco and plot Pitiless Carnage, which sets up Lumra for next turn to kind of combo off. Okay, maybe wait to take out Bronco in case they decide to saddle it, which might waste their turn. Alright, opponent does have Shieldred, so that means my Piddle's Carnage now doesn't look quite as good. Might be getting myself into a little bit of trouble by having this many swamps and not enough forests. Could still be okay to Carnage through Shieldred, as long as we can just win this turn. Pillage the Bog's not bad either. Alright, so I have 18 life, so I can draw 8 cards and still survive. So I could just sack all the lands I have, go to 2, and then I don't have a Nissa in play yet to make a ton of mana, but Spelunking will have my lands enter untapped. So I'll have 8, 9, 10, 11 mana available afterwards. 11 mana, it's a little bit risky. I guess I want to keep one land in play regardless, so that Lumra doesn't die when I play it. So maybe that's fine then. Found a Nissa. that's excellent. So, can play Nissa. Still hadn't played land for turn. Fetch. We already have a Vine Lasher in hand. Although, can't play it with Offspring right now. Maybe it's okay to play it without Offspring, since we'll get a lot of landfall triggers here. Then play Lumra. Lands are untapped, and we have a Nissa making mana. So we've got all the mana in the world. And now it's just a matter of sacking Analyst a few times to finish them off with a Vine Lasher. Do we have any additional Vine Lashers in the graveyard to get back with Gix's command? At this point we can also take out Shieldred and then draw to our heart's content. But yeah, opponent's at four, and I have more than four fetch lands in play, so they are just dead here. Yeah, shield root can be scary, but since they weren't applying pressure early, 
we were still able to combo through it. Should have a couple basics left. I guess only three left in my deck. Our opponent doesn't know that. Uh, maybe I should just play the Analyst, although our opponent sees it in our hand, so... If they want to concede, they can. Could also play Spelunking to put an extra land in play. It does draw me a card, so I'll go down to two, but that's maybe the fastest way to do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little slow, no interaction, so we could easily get run over by Mono Red. That being said, I think it's still a keepable hand with Spelunking ramping out Lumera. And we seem to be up against Poison. That also seems like a tough matchup if we don't find one of our sweepers soon. We'll get a Swamp. We can pillage the bog to maybe find our choking miasma. Which also doesn't target anything with uh, Rod Priest in play. Yeah, I don't think I have time to plot it first. No miasma, found an analyst. That's probably our best pick. But yeah, it feels like we're just a step behind. Opponent can already apply at least three poison. They can attack past my creatures with Skrelv as well, which they are keeping back to protect the Rock Priest, it seems. So that gives us a little bit more time to maybe draw into a Sweeper. So to that end, I might be better off playing the Spelunking here over Analyst. Although Analyst can maybe block. They could also have some removal for it in hand, like the Annex Sentry. So I think I still like Spelunking. If they have a counter spell, I guess it's still fine to Spelunking here, since then next turn I can double spell, double Analyst. Spelunking resolves. And uh, can put the Escape Tunnel in play. Not forced to sacrifice it instantly, since it'll enter untapped now. If her opponent keeps being patient, it might buy us an extra turn, but they're now sending in Skrelv as well. So we're at 5 poison, halfway there. And it does feel like they're maybe keeping up a counter spell here, which will make things even more difficult. There was no real reason to sacrifice right away. Cutdown can now answer the Rot Priest. So we can maybe start there. Opponent might counter it, and then I can still go double Analyst afterwards. If they have a protection spell to give Rot Priest Hexproof, then they just get to apply an extra poison for free. Alright, that worked. Our opponent was looking at the Seed Core, which can be a way to pump 1-1 one, one creatures, but doesn't... Uh, Target to 1-2, a Rod Priest. Alright, we have double Analyst in play. Skrelv can still give protection from green, quote-unquote, here. To sneak in some poison. And there's a Sentry, like we suspected. But it looks like I will get to resolve Lumera, at least. This deals two poison, since it does get amplified by Skrelv, so we're actually at eight, and two choking Miasma. That was pretty important draw. So how many lands do I have in graveyards? We didn't mill very many, so we got a bit unlucky there. Yeah, if I had a couple more lands, then I might have been able to play Lumra and choking Miasma. I guess we still can. Just won't be with uh, Kicker, perhaps. And now I could mill more lands with Lumera, of course. Thanks to the Spelunking. 
Alright, perfect. And can I now maybe sack the fetch lands to sack analysts? I guess there's not that much of a point. So we'll just uh, fetch here. Yeah, I guess there's no huge upside to putting a plus one counter on analyst. Well, actually, maybe there was, since I could have more easily blocked a 1 1 through the seed core. But we can just block with Lumra on the 1 1, Analyst on Sentry, perhaps. Upside of sacking Analyst right away is if they have another Sentry, they can't exile it. But if we wait, we can maybe set up more landfall synergies. Hive is going to help them go wide. And a Duelist, especially deadly with Skrelv. Although a single hit would be lethal anyway. So it's not looking great for us since we are facing lethal next turn. Is there anything I can do to improve my odds here? I guess fetching to thin out the deck might be reasonable. And then I'm hoping to find Pitiless Carnage, of which I have two left in the deck. Pillage could find Carnage. And another board wipe would help. So we do have some outs, but... And still probably favors the opponents. Yeah, we can have a look here. Gix's Command, Miasma, Carnage are kind of the heavy hitters. Pillage the Bog. Don't think Vine Lasher is going to close it out for me here. Which would be a reason to not sack the Fetch Lands right away. Alright, we found Pillow's Carnage. So we get to keep comboing. Do want to make sure I keep one land in place so we don't lose Lumra, although I guess I'm going to play another one. Uh, although I guess I also want to play one with a land in place, so yeah, this is fine. Cast the Carnage. Can also sack the Lumra on the battlefield, I suppose. Although then I don't get to attack this turn, which may be relevant. So I'll just sack the... Uh, a new Lumra. But first, let's see if we can do anything else. Another Carnage is great. Can uh, play an extra fetch land to get more mana. And then we can still sank the Analyst as well. So... Yeah, I guess we play a fetch land. And then I can start by sacking the Analyst. Get all those lands back. I have a couple additional lands we can get. And then time to Carnage. Double tap Q to float all our mana is a little bit faster. So Carnage. Once again keeping one land in play. Okay, looks good. And then we have 15 cards left I can draw. I guess it means I'll maybe mill myself with Lumra, but I'm pretty sure we can just win the game this turn. Alright, we found Vine Lasher. Play that with Offspring. Play Lumra. It's probably the easiest. And that's more than 20 damage. Sweet, all right, so the clean 5-0 here. So yeah, black, green, Lumra, Landfall might be the real deal. Now we didn't really face the typical mono-red aggro decks, which are actually quite popular on the ladder right now, especially one splashing black for the uh, burn together from the Cell Sword. So the question is, can this deck beat mono-red, especially when we're on the draw? I think the answer is probably 
less often than we would win those matchups, although at least with the early spot removal and a couple sweepers like Miasma, we stand a chance to slow the opponent down enough where we can eventually combo off, and there's not a whole lot of disruption out of these red decks, it's just purely about surviving and then setting up our own combos. But against more mid-range and even control decks, we have some pretty good tools to just uh, win in one big turn, so that hasn't really changed compared to the previous standard builds of this deck, whether or not you splash red for World Soul's Rage is kind of up to your own discretion, but I haven't found it to be incredibly necessary, now with the Vine Lasher being a pretty cheap win condition for you as well. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!